So if you guys can visualize right now, here's a nice shoreline. And then there's a nice tapering flat extending out from here that's covered with grass. I got a fish on right now. So just a nice tapering flat mid depth, I'd say five to 10 feet of water and it's covered with grass, but the grass isn't up to the surface. This is the fall months right now. So we're, we're way down from peak weed growth and the weeds are topping off at about five feet, but it's a big flat and we've had a warm up this fall. Water temps are about 53, 54 degrees and the bass are up out of that grass and they're just cruising around feeding. Kyle and I went up shallow a little bit earlier today, looked at the bank. We saw a bunch of different minnows. We saw some bass on laydowns. And it's kind of the classic, I'd say mid fall, mid to late fall pattern. When you get these nice warm up days where the bass get really active and on the chew, and the lipless crankbait is one of the better ways to go work these grassy areas. You can look at my mega live and you can see 2D sonar and I, I even got 360 imaging up. And what we're doing is we're targeting grass patches like this right here. I'll give you a little switch over here to uh, 360. You can see there, I got a nice grass clump. You know, we'll use mega live. That might be a fish right there. And just kind of target those grass clumps with a lipless. It's like it's got a bunch of bluegill in it, a bunch of different minnows. And again, with water temps in that, you know, 50 to 55 degree range, moving baits really work well for these northern strain largemouth. I could have on a crankbait, but realistically, if we're trying to move quickly, it's pretty tough to come through grass as effectively with a hard bait than with a lipless crankbait like this. This one's a Yozuri rattling vibe, real popular. Lipless has a great wobble, makes a great noise. I made one small little modification here. I threw a bladed treble on that front hook, which has a quite a bit of flash in the water when you look at it. So, you know, does that simulate a school of bait fish? I, it doesn't hurt, especially on a day where you have some nice sun poking through like this, you get a lot of flash off that extra blade. So just a little bit of extra confidence, but you know, just made out that cast to let that bait go down about four foot. And I'm just kind of yo-yoing it through the grass and I want to contact some cover. This is kind of good, clean, green weed still, coontail and cabbage. So when I hit that stuff, I'm just gonna pop it like that and I'll snap it through. And these fish definitely are on the on a lipless chew. Here's one here. And this is kind of where it falls off. So that's an outer edge fish. The nice thing is with the lipless, as I can come back through this area now and, and go pitch a jig, get down into that cover and extract some more fish. But to be honest with you, I really, I really enjoy covering water this time of the year and just, just cast, beating the bank, casting around. Kind of interesting there, you can see he got that lead treble hook. I can't tell you for sure if it made a difference, but again, it didn't hurt. That fish grabbed the head of the bait. Thanks, buddy. And we're gonna go throw around some shoreline laydowns as well. But I mean, that's the program you know, when you get around that fall turnover period of time, and I'd say water temps are in and around that 40 or 54, 50 to 55 degrees on these nice warmer fall days. I mean, I'm not really bundled up right now. I'm pretty comfortable. A lipless is a really good tool to go cover water. And I got a bunch of stuff on the deck. We've caught some spinnerbait fish. Kyle caught a nice one on a chatterbait. But when it's came down to quickly covering these big flats, the majority of our bites have come on this rattle and vibe today. And you can just cover water. Look at that, 100 foot cast. Start reeling with the seven to one. And on the retrieve, I'm not just doing a straight retrieve. If I'm not contacting cover, I'm just kind of varying up my retrieve. I'll pop, I'll let that bait fall. So it's kind of doing this. I'll retrieve straight, I'll give it a pop just to work some inconsistencies into the bait. And this lake doesn't get a ton of angling pressure. Um, so rattles are a big attraction out, out here. These fish haven't heard a lot of rattles. So I do believe it is a positive in this situation. And they haven't been fished. I mean, we're mid late fall in the part of the country we live in. 
a lot of guys spend their fall hunting or chasing walleye. So making a little bit of noise and covering water is a, is a good way to contact and trigger these fish. And then drop some waypoints when you get bit. And then you can go back and fish those areas through with a vertical presentation. You know, like a half ounce jig is going to be pretty tough to beat this time of year. There we go. That guy came off of a little bit cleaner bottom, but I was still contacting a little bit of fringe grass. <laughs> he ate it good. I, again, I can't tell you for sure, but I did make the switch up from the stock trouble hook to that that bladed one and that bait is head first down the hatch so it's not hurting anything quick little modification and we'll fish the bladed trouble we fish it on spoons quite often regular crank baits jerk baits just to introduce a little extra flash and vibration and then the hook it comes on this is a vmc hybrid treble it's a real nice sticky hook and the hooks the hook points actually curve in a little bit which according to Otto Defoe and I tend to believe him help keep those hooks stickier longer they're a little less exposed to uh, a little less exposed to the rocks or wood as it comes through you can see they they turn in a little bit so that that hook stays sharp for a long time Sweet little setup there, kind of a citrus shad color. We don't have shad up here, but we have a lot of bait fish that have silver sides and certainly a little bit of translucent blue is a pretty, pretty combo. Ooh, there he is. Oh, some fish on this point. That one feels a little better. I might want to spot lock. Could be another hammer handle. He hasn't come up to the surface yet. A decent bass. Gorgeous colors on this guy. I mean, look at the look at his lateral line in the fall like this. And he's hooked on that front treble again. These are active fish, man. Why go slow when you can just go? cast a bait around kind of a pretty little mark on his cheek there thanks buddy and you can see I was just ripping a little bit of that a little bit of the grass on bottom made contact with the cover jerked it free and he was on when you get on a good run of fish you know we're dealing with comparatively kind of cold cold water for we're not too far out from a winter pattern where we live so these fish will group up in certain areas so if you get bit just note the cast make repeated cast to that area just in case there's a nice school there we were going downwind I hit spot lock that's gonna spin us around but I, I just want to thoroughly cast this point you know there could be 20 fish on it nice thing is too you don't need real specialized gear for this I mean this is this is like a Texas rig jig setup for me. Um, seven foot, two medium heavy rod with uh, a Daiwa Tatula Elite pitch and flip. So I've literally just cut a jig off and tied on my lipless. But, you know, I'm kind of fishing that lipless like a jig and, you know, I want to be able to get hooks and get the fish out of the cover. A little bit heavier fluoro. This bank here has a pretty nice drop to it, kind of a 45, so. When I'm fishing by myself, I like to be selfish and get nice long casts down the edge where I think those fish are holding. So I'll run this bank parallel for a little bit. For that reason right there, I can just keep the bait in the strike zone a little bit longer. It's a little bit better fish. You know, and they'll track that bait if it stays in the same depth. These largemouth right now don't want to go, go out over the abyss. So, uh-oh. Uh -oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Not a bad chunk. Boy, they 
are pretty. Kyle and I have been chasing crappie today, but this lake puts out a good number, you know, average sized bass like this, which make it a fun one to go to just to mix it up a little bit. Oh, there we go. That one's off that lay down. Just kind of changed my casting angle, swung out wide and then kind of fired one down the length of it. Scrappy one. Get a little flip on him. Oof. Lead, lead trouble hook. I don't know, Kyle, I'd say that hook doesn't hurt because I was losing a bunch on that rear hook. Yeah. You know? That's kind of interesting. <laughs> 